the US EPA defines vapor intrusion as the intrusion of volatile compounds into confined structures such as homes, buildings, office complexes, schools. There's a variety of chemicals that can infiltrate in the homes. Most of them are coming from fuels like gasoline or diesel fuel or heating oil that have been leaking from underground storage tanks at the corner gas station. They make their way down to the groundwater, they mix with the groundwater, and the groundwater then migrates down gradient and into a housing development or into an uh, area that has a school or maybe an office complex. And while this gasoline is moving in the groundwater as a liquid, it's also off-gassing and becoming a vapor. It's what you smell when you gas up your car. Uh, the strip mall dry cleaners use a lot of dry cleaning solvents. Those solvents can be spilled and enter into floor drains in the facility. And so these compounds are now moving upward through the soil and into people's homes. And in some cases, these contaminant plumes, that's what we call them in the groundwater, can move for many miles. And through that entire migration process, you have this off-gassing, this partitioning to vapors and it's moving up and entering homes and offices and buildings far down gradient from the original source. As the awareness of vapor intrusion increases, the Gore module and the Gore survey are well positioned to help environmental consultants and regulators address and understand vapor intrusion into a home or an office or a school. In the last five to ten years, the awareness around breathing these chemicals has moved to the forefront of the environmental regulator investigations. Overall, the process of collecting a passive air sample is quite simple. You can deploy 15 to 20 samplers within a home in as little as 45 minutes. Retrieval of samplers in an indoor air study is very simple, much like soil gas. It takes one person a very small amount of time to take the samplers down, record the retrieval dates and times, and package them up and ship them off to the lab. The other traditional method to assess human health risk is to look at how you are coming in contact with contaminated groundwater, either through drinking water wells or maybe showering in that contaminated water can expose you to those chemicals. How you are coming in contact with contaminated soils, for example, kids on a playground, the children are running around, they're getting dirty, their hands are touching these soils, and then they're touching food or putting their fingers directly in the mouth. Overall, the process of collecting a passive soil gas sample, a passive sub-slab soil gas sample, is quite simple. There is very little equipment required to create the hole. Retrieval is even easier. Depending on your site conditions, a two-person crew can probably install 60 to 70 soil gas samplers in a day. One person can retrieve the, that number of samplers in a half a day or less. Once the GORE modules are analyzed using the US EPA methods, the data from those samplers are contoured. They're plotted on a series of maps, and those contour maps show the kinds of the compounds that were adsorbed by the sampler the distribution of those compounds across the site, and the concentration of those compounds across the site. The final report then and the contour maps are used to guide the investigator uh, into the next phases of the vapor intrusion investigation. With the data in hand, the environmental consultant and the regulator now know if these compounds are indeed present in the vapor state. They now have an idea of where they're located, the kinds of compounds that are there and the distribution of those compounds as well as their concentrations across the site.